If we look at South Africa the next five years, I think uh, it starts off really on a positive note. President Ramaphosa has now won his own majority, and it's very clear that uh, he was, in a sense, the savior of the ANC. The ANC would have done significantly worse had Ramaphosa not been president. So he's very secure, President Ramaphosa, in his position. And personally, I expect Ramaphosa probably to remain president until 2029. Our next elections are uh, in 2021. We have local government elections, 2024, national elections again. And I think given the recent election results, it's quite probable that the ANC uh, may even get a majority in 2024. It may, of course, lose in Gauteng, and then the question becomes, with whom does the ANC enter into an alliance? Would it be one of the major opposition parties, the Democratic Alliance or the EFF, or would it uh, be able to put together a governing coalition in Gauteng in 2024, if it goes below 50% in Gauteng, with some smaller parties? But in the immediate uh, days that lie ahead, we will um, see the inauguration of President Ramaphosa at Loftus Fersfeld on Saturday, and then either on Sunday or Monday, he will announce his cabinet. There's been lots of speculation. Uh, a number of the um, very evidently uh, corrupt uh, members of the current cabinet are not standing uh, for cabinet positions again. And Ramaphosa's position has been strengthened uh, as a result of the elections to be able to have a stronger hand in the appointment of a smaller cabinet and a more capable cabinet. So the general speculation is that the cabinet is going to be to go down to about 25 members with perhaps uh, 10 deputy ministers. And the big question is who is going to be appointed deputy president? Um, is it going to be uh, a lady, a woman? And if so, whom, given that the current deputy president of the ANC, Didi Mabuza, has indicated that he would prefer to be redeployed uh, to uh, Latuli House. In the interim, the uh, impact of the various commissions of inquiry are bound to have quite an impact upon the internal factional struggle within the ANC particularly on the faction that is led by um, Secretary General Ace Magashule, uh, who is under severe strain. But generally, President Ramaphosa, is, uh, is, his position is safe. There was lots of speculation in the run-up to the elections that he may be removed. I have always thought this is uh, completely unlikely, and I think uh, now uh, that concern can be uh, uh, put to the side. Um, so Ramaphosa has to face uh, the challenges um, to get South Africa growing. Um, in 2017, I wrote a book, Fate of the Nation, on the future of South Africa with various scenarios, and uh, that analysis still holds. Essentially, without uh, much more rapid economic growth, employment intensive growth, uh, the prospects of South Africa are not good. South Africa has been growing about 2% below the average of upper middle income economies for several decades. Uh, to change those growth prospects imply a change in the structure of the South African economy. Uh, we are already spending more on education than most other countries, but the high expenditure on social grants and other means to alleviate deep-seated poverty uh, means that we are not spending on uh, productive investments on uh, knowledge capital. Uh, so that is a huge drag. Uh, they, the ANC and its policies uh, serve as a kind of a wet blanket on the South African economy. So there is much that Ramaphosa can do. Uh, getting local confidence and investor confidence is certainly the cheapest and the best way to proceed. These are free. All that they require is they require that, firstly, local South Africans, South African business, uh, start investing and trusting that the future of the country is, is turned. And I think generally South Africa uh, bottomed out and has started on an upward trajectory probably about three or four months ago. We are headed for around, on average, maybe around 2% average growth rates, uh, medium long term. We, of course, need to get to 5, 6, 7 percent uh, growth if we are to deal with unemployment, inequality and poverty. And that can only be done by better governance. 
and uh, therefore the appointment of a capable small cabinet, the reduction of red tape, uh, possibly a review of uh, labour market inflexibility, possibly also of the constraints on small business, are all measures that Ramaphosa has to look at uh, looking medium long term. But structural changes have to happen. We have to find a solution to ESCOM. The ESCOM challenge, of course, will not come easily. It will involve a degree of pain for consumers, for uh, business, uh, and for, uh, for government. The decision to split ESCOM into three separate units can only occur once these three uh, units are stabilized in themselves. And with a debt burden of 650 billion rand, uh, this is a huge ask. So uh, the South, South Africa is going to still take some uh, pain in the process of ridding itself or finding a solution of the most intractable state-owned enterprise, um, ESCOM. Uh, there is talk of a, a package of 150 billion Rand that is going to be uh, put on the table uh, a cons uh, of, through a variety of financial instruments that may alleviate this burden. But uh, quite clearly, the turnaround in ESCOM and other state-owned enterprises, it's going to take a few years. And in the meanwhile, of course, international pressures and events like the trade war between China and the United States will impact upon South Africa. It could, of course, impact quite positively on South Africa. We remain a gateway to Southern Africa. We have significant growth potential if we can get our governance uh, sorted out. And to reiterate, the most important and quick win in South Africa's future is to re-establish local and foreign investor confidence that the country has turned the corner and that we have a capable government and that we will deal with corruption. When I look at the long-term future of Africa, um, and I'm just finishing a book, uh, a second book that looks at, at long-term futures of, of South Africa, it's evident that um, the African continental free trade area provides particular opportunity for South Africa and for Africa to grow the African economy because we have larger markets um, and uh, larger markets means that it will attract investors amongst others. South Africa, I think, going forward, uh, if we look at our foreign policy requirements and uh, demands, uh, these come from our domestic challenges and therefore uh, enhancing regional economic integration, trade integration, in my view, is probably where the Ramaphosa administration should and will place its primary focus looking at South Africa's future. So generally, South Africa is in a good spot. The future is a future of growth, of confidence, of cautious optimism. Uh, we will see what happens with the cabinet. We will see what happens in the years that lie ahead. But we have a capable, cab uh, capable pr uh, president. I think we will have a capable cabinet. And I think that uh, the doom and gloom and the divisions within South Africa should in the months and years ahead slowly but surely give rise and give way to a greater sense of confidence in the future and that South Africa can start rebuilding the social compact for which we were known.